Thank you so much, everyone. I hope uh, everybody is fit here. <laughs> Nobody is injured. Uh, well, uh, this is something uh, you know we should always uh, ask ourselves. And uh, when I used to play cricket, this is the question what I always used to ask. You know, why I'm getting injured? What's the what's the reason behind your injury? And you should know if it's if the injury is coming because of training, it's a matter of concern for me. You know, and. When we play cricket, we never think like that, that it's happening because of training, because when we go in the gym and when we train, we never, we never uh, go there to get unfit. We always go there to get more fitter, you know? And uh, this is one of the things which I kept on asking, and I never used to get that kind of answer. But end of my car ca uh, career, yeah, end of my career, you know, I. I, I really found it like what, what I was doing, you know, what kind of training I was doing. Uh, it has to be a, related to the movements, what you normally do in a field. So if you, if you go to YouTube or Google and you type training or you type functional training, you know, this is one of the words which is so popular. It is so popular in fitness industry that you get to see at least millions of videos. You get to see a lot of videos related to those functional training. And every, every, Every video has its own meaning. And we have to realize that what functional training is all about. And so I have my take related to functional training. You pick, you pick any organism. You pick any organism. You pick a dog. You pick a bird. You pick a dolphin. You pick any organism. Or you pick a kangaroo. I mean, you have to see the basic function, the primarily function of that organism. So if I see a dog, what do I see? The dog runs on all four. And if I see a bird, the bird fly in air. So a lot of adduction and abduction I normally get to see in a bird. And if I see a dolphin, dolphin swim in water. So everybody has its own function. And that primarily function is related to its biological evolution of adaptation, what that species is having. So if I have to train a dog, I'll definitely make sure that I'm training a dog like a dog. I cannot train a dog to fly like a bird. It's not possible. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So if I have to train a bird, I cannot make the bird move on the ground. So when I normally have to train these species, I have to see the, what, what's, what's the characteristics, what's, what's the adaptation of that particular species. Now when it comes to training a human, we have to realize like what kind of primary function we people are having, you know. So if I see a primary function of a human, the humans are, we are adapted, we are contralateral reciprocators. We reciprocate our one limb reciprocate with the other limb when we walk, when we run. So these are the two primary functions. So if I have to train any human, I have to revolve around his gait cycle. That's, that's one of the reasons why I feel gait is so important. So when it comes to functional training, I always feel that we have to realize like the word functional training should be related to these kind of things. So if you're training a human and if it is not related to this kind of evidence, it should not be called functional. It should be related to that kind of evolution which you normally you're training, that kind of species. And that's one of the things which I always feel it's so important. The gait cycle, you know, the walk and run. And somehow I feel there are other functions also. You can. You can always train yourself in doing backflips, you can do somersault, you can cartwheel, you can do any other thing, but is that your, is that, uh, uh, your uh, speciality? Is that you are born with? Is that the function what you normally can do? You have to ask that question yourself. And if, it, if you're going to the gym and if your training is not related to that, if it is not related to that, definitely you're going to have problems. You have to, you have to face some consequences which is, which is inevitable. So, yeah. So these these are the functions what I s see in in a normal human being, you know. And when when we go to the gym, you know, and especially as a cricketer, what I feel, you know, when 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 a person is going to the gym, there has to be a reason behind any kind of movement what you normally do. When I see any cricketer who is going to the gym and when he starts lifting weights. I sometimes feel, is it going to help him when he's going to move in that direction? 
is it going to help him when he'll be like playing cricket, when he'll be playing, when he'll be bowling, when he'll be batting or doing fielding? And that's, that's a question mark. So traditional, traditional lifting is one of the things which you normally get to see. If you, if you see Virat Kohli, if you see Hardik Pandya, if you see they, 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 most of the guys uh, in Indian cricket team, they believe in traditional lifting and that's what it's going for. But at the same time, if you normally see the injuries pattern has gone up. I'm not against any system. I'm not here to bash any system because at some point you have to lift weights that I totally agree. But you have to decide this thing that in which angle and which way that weight is going, you know? And that's something which, you know, when, 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 you, when you keep on overloading a pattern in traditional lifting, when you, like a, like a deadlift or a back squat, or when you put a, a, a bar on your spine and when you go down and keep coming up, that's a kind of thing which, which is like you are fighting against gravity. And gravity is something which is nature, which is like you cannot escape with that. You have to realize like gravity is something which, which always keeps pulling you downwards. If you see an, a very old man, you normally see him you know, walking like this. That's one of the reasons why, because the gravity has pulled him down. And when you put a bar on your spine and when you keep going down and when you overload that pattern, it compresses your spine. Other thing what I feel in traditional lifting, you know, that there is no dynamic movement in that. And when you relate it with cricket or any sport you play, there are some restrictions. It works in only in sagittal plane, it doesn't work in transverse. And when you go and play cricket or do any kind of functional sport, that movement is not going to help you because definitely when you have tuned or trained your body in that manner, you have that kind of disadvantage because your body is not ready to prepare that movement. You're not ready to face that movement. The other thing what I feel in traditional lifting, you know, the problem what comes is the torso rotation. The torso doesn't rotate much. And this is one of the things which is very important because if you're not rotating your torso, if you're not rotating this part, because I've seen a lot of cricketers when they go in the field, they have to rotate their torso and they start rotating their pelvis. And that's the, that's the time, that's the mistake what they keep doing because in the gym they've never been trained in that manner, like how to rotate their torso. They have, uh, they have really less knowledge about that. And that's how I always feel that sling system comes into action, you know, how you should be training because that's an important question. When you are training in a gym, you have to realize like lifting weight vertically and moving horizontally are two different things. And these are the two things which are very important when you compare it. And these two things are very different when it comes into action. I can lift weight, I can lift very heavy weight, but at the same time, I need to know that what, where I'm lifting it, in which angle I'm lifting it. Every human guy, every human person is having a kind of motion, a pattern, a sling pattern, a kind of rhythm. You know, that rhythm is called biorhythm. A biorhythm, when you walk, you know, you create a parabolic motion. You normally, when you walk, it, nothing works in a, in, a, in a horizontal thing. Everything works in a, uh, in a parabolic way. And, and that kind of pattern is called a wave pattern. You normally see, if, if you normally see a snake, how it moves, it creates a kind of sling and moves forward. If you see a kangaroo, if, when it jumps, it moves in a certain kind of sling pattern. Same with humans, you know, when they move, they create that kind of sling pattern and they move forward. You cannot jump on two feet. You have to be a contralateral reciprocator. We are bipedal organism and that's, that's a truth. And we have to realize that kind of truth. We have to accept it. So when we are using that formula in cricket or any other sport, it's not, it's not going to work. Definitely it's going to give you strength, but that strength is something which is like a kind of gifts, what you are getting a return gifts, and you have to keep that. And that converts those things into injuries and you have to bear with that. So I was, you know, I, I always, whenever I, open a newspaper or whenever I see news about cricket, you know, I, it's very disheartening to see most of the cricketers are injured. We, we have seen just few days back, I came to know that Bumra and uh, Hardik Pandey were the two guys who were injured and then Bhuvnesh Kumar, he just, he's in England to have his uh, hernia operation, his sports hernia. I mean, and I decided to like what kind of training they are doing, you know, because I really wanted to know is that training related to the sports they are playing. So 
I was just going through Hardik Pandya's videos and I just want to share it with you people. Like, if you normally see Hardik Pandya's bowling, because when we see Hardik Pandya's bowling, we see like what kind of rotation he makes. When, you, when he's bowling, what kind of effort, what kind of pressure he's giving to his body. So as a, as a cricketer, if you normally see Hardik Pandya's, because that's, that's the video I think it's been taken uh, in Mum when he was in Mumbai Indian, then, and John T, you were a part of uh, Mumbai Indian, then you must have seen Hardik. I mean, fantastic cricketer. I would be, uh, I really want that guy to be in the uh, uh, Indian team very soon, and uh, he's one of the all rounders what I think India needs. So when I see Hardik Pandya's video, when, you know, I always watch what kind of rotation he's making. He has to rotate when he's bowling. Without rotation, he cannot, he cannot bowl. You can see how his hip are completely shifted to the one side and how his torso is rotating. And at the same time, he's rotating with his hips. This is the kind of movement he has to do. It's not only in bowling, it's in batting, in throwing. That's the kind of thing which he has to do. But when I watched his training video, I was so surprised that there was not even a single rotation which was involved. If you, if, if you watch his training video, you just, you, you just watch what, what he's doing in his training. Well, these, these, these all videos I've picked it from YouTube, so you have to go with the advertisement, which... <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> That's... So, I'm nothing. I'm still saying that I don't want to bash any system, you know, because this is something people say like he's against any system. I'm against the formula which is which is being used. There is no rotation. There is no rotation. He's lifting heavy weight, and especially in that kind of manner where he's putting a weight above his shoulder. Definitely, you know, his his spine is going to get compressed more. He's going to get compressed more. Even when he's doing lunges, he's not rotating. Most of his lunge is without rotation. And these are all traditional uh, training kind of thing, which even when he's doing step-ups, there is no rotation. This is something which I always want that any Indian cricketer or anything what they are doing, they need to bring that kind of rotation in, in, in their schedule. They have to bring that kind of... And how are you going to bring it? That's a very important question. You know, how are you going to bring it? So that's where my role starts. You know, how... Because we, we have never evolved, as in traditional lifting, we have never evolved. Because the reason why I'm saying is that most of the exercise, what he's doing, even when he's doing, when he's on the ground, most of his training is like a, you know, I, I'm sorry to say, but it is related to a kangaroo. If kangaroo jumps like this, I can agree. If, he, if kangaroo trains like this, it definitely, you know, I can say like he's, that's making a point. But Hardik Pandya, if he's going to jump like this, and without the rotation, he's not going to use his sling pattern. And sling pattern is so important. If you're not going to use your anterior oblique sling and posterior oblique sling, if you're not rotating your torso, there'll be lateral shifts in your body. And that is going to happen when you're going to go on the ground and when you're going to run. If you watch his video in a very slow motion, you could see there is very less rotation in his torso. There is very less rotation. There has to be some kind of rotation to, make your to move your body forward. That's how humans are should walk when you when, when you walk how you you should be rotating with your torso so that's how you should be walking you know you have to rotate from your torso not not uh, not in a way where this guy is training there not even a single training sh thing not even a single movement what he was doing was related to the kind of movement what you are generating in a field so i i feel that when you are going in the gym you have to realize what kind of training you are doing the other thing what I missed, you know, in, in his training was that everything was like vertical. There is no horizontal. He's not doing anything on a pulley machine. If, even if these guys, they do anything on a pulley machine, because that's the horizontal force factor. That's how your body is going to move. And that horizontal force factor is so important when it comes into reality. And when even a normal human being, he has to realize that Everything, when he moves, he moves in this kind of direction. And it's a three-dimensional world. I agree that there are other functions which are important. You, you, you sit, you jump, you do things. But most of the time, the primarily function is to run and walk. And your whole training should be related to that kind of movement. 
and that's how the rotation comes. And it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's not only his video. I, I watched all the videos. I don't want to show every, everybody's training video here because that's going to take a long time here. But it's nothing wrong in saying that what kind of rehab they are doing. Is it, is it helping them? Because our muscles need connection. We need to realize like when we move, we move with the whole body. We never move with a single muscle. We have to realize when our shoulder rotates, our glutes needs to be active. It needs to get connected with the other muscles. It needs to get connected with our transfer the abdomen. It needs to get connected with our torso, which we always keep it almost dead. So this is one of the factors what I felt, you know, which is very important, which has to bring. And it is not only about a cricketer. It, it is about every human being. When, 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 when you go into the gym, you make sure that it should relate to your normal human daily movement. The other thing what I felt was like, you know, stretching when when we stretch and when we do fascia release, because a lot of people, they ask this question uh, related to this topic, like why, what we should be doing? Is it, is it like we should be doing stretching or we should be doing release? Well, if you ask me, I have a video related to that. You know, what, what happens when you stretch a lot, when you stretch your muscles a lot? That's something which is, I would like to show you. You know, I just got this video. So I, what I did was like I picked up two balloons. Not this, not this, Paji. It's the it's the balloon video which you normally if you can show. Yeah, this is a yellow balloon, which I just left it like that, and there was another balloon which was blue balloon which I stretched it. I stretched it in a such a way I made it hyper flaccid. So what happened when I put it on my uh, when when I when I used it on a toy? That balloon never used that kind of tensegrity. It lost its tensegrity. It was not able to contract. And when it lost its tensegrity, it was not able to use that kind of force to take that balloon up. And that's what it happens when you use your muscles into a stretching mode. When you stretch it a lot, it, you make it hyperflaccid. And those hyperflaccid things, when it comes into action, it, it, it's, it's a kind of thing which you normally, which you're not used to. And most of the time I've seen, people are stretching individual muscle. You have to realize, like, according to anatomy trains if, by, by Tom Myers, if you go through it, we have meridians running in our body. You know, we have different kind of lines. We have functional line, we have spiral line, we have lateral line, we have so many lines, superficial front line, back line, and a lot of people are expert and they will agree to me that these lines needs to be stretched in a chain, not as an individual. So when we, when we keep stretching our hamstring muscle, we think like we are getting ready for that kind of movement. So, you have to think that if everybody here, if I tell you to run a 100 meter dash in next five minutes, what you people will be doing? If I tell everybody has to run in next five minutes, definitely I'm, I, I'm sure like a lot of people will be doing stretching. You will be stretching your muscles a lot. And that kind of thing, and at the same time, if I put a lion in this room, I'm sure you will be running like anything. You're not going to tell your lion or anything like, just wait for some time, let me stretch a bit, then you can chase me. It's not going to happen because lion is a kind of nature. You know, you have to accept it. When, the, when that kind of nature is going to hit you, you have no time. So when you, when you have to, when, even when you have to stretch, you have to make sure that that stretch has to come in a chain and it has to be in a, a that kind of mode, like it's, it has to be a retention kind of stretch. When you run, you give attention to your whole muscles. That's how your body gets stretched. That's how your body moves. So that's why I always feel that running is so important. We, we are missing that kind of mode. We don't run. How many, I don't know uh, how many people believe that, but if you're going to run, and if you're going to run really fast, your automatically your body gets stretched. You don't have to do a lot of individual stretch. I, I've not stretched from last three years, not even a single time, but I do other kind of movements where I know like these movements creates retentioning in my body and it helps me to move better. That's what you have to uh, decide, like what you should be doing. You should be in a linear fashion or you should know how to move better. And about myofascia release, I always feel that is something which everybody should be doing because what happens, you know, our muscles are wrapped in, in a web which is called fascia. And these fascias, because of some dysfunctional movements, we create a kind of knots in our body. And those knots, can only be removed through fascia release. And it is a self-massage kind of thing. 
there are tools related to that. We have Theracane, we have uh, Foam Roller, which I feel it is better to do with the PVC pipe because it gets into your fascia. There are lacrosse balls, and if you are going to any kind of uh, uh, tournament and any kind of match, I always feel that why fascia release is much more important and better thing rather than doing stretching because when you're going to do fascia release, it, it always takes away the restriction in your body. It gives you a kind of, uh, it improves your, uh, 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 restrict, it, it improves your movement and that kind of movement which you want when you are in the field. Well, if you talk about my career, you know, I, I don't remember any tournament where I never lied on a physio table. During IPL, every, I have a very good relation with physio. It's not because, it, it's not because a human, you know, it's, it's not because that I, I was so friendly with them, it is because most of the time I was on a physio table. That's one of the reasons. I had lysthesis in my back, which is like a, which, which happened because of stress fracture. I was having chondromalacia and of patella. You know, I think doctor knows better what it is. And my movement was restricted and I was finding it very difficult when I was like 35 years old. And I realized like what, what kind of pattern I'm following. Is it, I have to get that kind of knowledge. And I started looking, I started discovering. And that time when I found functional patterns, you know, that's the company from where I've come. That's the company from where I've finished this kind of knowledge. There are many other things which I want to cover up. But when it comes to functional patterns, you know, there are many practitioners all over the globe. And right now I'm the one who is in India. I hope in future many practitioners, if you go to a world map of uh, functional pattern. Uh, if you go to their site and if you see the practitioner, there will be a map which is, which you can, you can travel all over the globe, but there will be like practitioners over there who can train you, who can take you out from the injury, and they can give you a kind of, they'll, they'll know about the history and what kind of movements you normally make. Well, that's, that's owned by uh, Naughty Aguilar, and he's one of the CEO of this company, and he's, 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 his intake and his thoughts are very logical to me. You know, when, when I started discovering he, what, whatever thoughts he was having, he used to give us a kind of movement, you know, he used to give us a kind of uh, reason why you should be doing this kind of training. And it, it goes with everyone, every human, or every, any kind of sport you play. And functional pattern came into existence from the last 10 years, but we have trained a, uh, a guy called Kyle Dake, and he was in a very bad shape when Kyle Dake came, and that was his time when he wanted to get fit, and when, he, when he was doing wrestling. So he, he asked Naughty to train him, and he became two times world champion, and still, I think, in the next Olympics, what I feel, nothing can stop him in taking a, a gold medal. I'm not talking about silver, I'm talking about gold. Nothing can stop him until unless if he gets unavoidable injury. So that's kind of confidence I'm having in that system. And this is something which I want to show you, you know, the functional pattern, what it is. Kyle Dick, we watched what kind of movements he was normally making uh, when he was lifting a kind of heavy wrestler, and he has to push him you have, you have to pull him, you have to deal with all kind of movements. So, they started training him, they started making his movements more easy for him. That's, Naughty started taking all the dysfunction out from his system. And believe me, he, he's not lifting, he's, he's not done even a single kind of traditional lifting. He never did bench press, he never did back squats, he never did any kind of movements because we know that it's not going to help him and that's what he was doing earlier. There is a video in there. Uh, the, uh, can you just put the sound in there, please? There's no sound? But there's no sound, otherwise uh, you could have really liked this video. Well, it's a five minutes video which I really wanted to put. So if you normally see, when you, when you are training any, any athlete, you have to understand that what kind of sport he's playing. And I was, 
I was just reading about PV Sindhu, you know, he, she, she became world champion and when she became world champion, the credit was given to one of the exercises called deadlift. So before this video gets finished, I'll keep talking about the uh, PV Sindhu. So the whole credit was given to a deadlift which she started just one month back. And they said like because of deadlift, she, she got strength. But after she became world champion, she, she lost in many tournaments. I really want that she should win, but where is the credit now? I want to ask because the restrictions have come into her movement or is it because she's not training the same way or same exercise? Because when you give credit to a certain exercise, you have to give the credit to the same exercise when you are failing. And I really wish that she, she should succeed. And any sportsman, especially from India, I really want that when you win any kind of tournament, the flag is high, you know, I feel proud for that. But when it comes to movement, we are not evolving as in a training system. We have to evolve, we have to come, we have to improve in our training system. And these are all dynamic movements. You have to go from A to B, from B to C, and that's how you make a word and that's how you make a sentence. Kyle Dake was, when he came to Nordi, he, he trained in such a way that now he's able to do all those dynamic movements. There has to be a kind of uh, movements what you have to do before these movements. So you don't try, go and try these movements. That's, that's a mistake what I did earlier. So whenever you get time, just keep watching th those kind of videos of functional pattern. Do follow functional pattern because it's going to change your thinking about training. It's going to change your thinking about rehabs, what we normally do. And to be honest, you know, that's all from my side. And I hope uh, uh, you people have some kind of thinking what I'm uh, putting across to your mind. Thank you so much.